In this brand new update video, I have the latest and no hype information as the next winter storm is inbound over the next 48 to 72 hours with newest data from the plains to the east coast. That includes information regarding snow, ice, as well as rain. In addition to that, I've also got the latest look at some of the very cold temperatures expected at least through the end of the week, plus a look ahead to what could be beyond that. Before we dive deeper into the timing for this next winter storm, let's talk about the overview as it is set to exit parts of the west and move out, continuing to move into the central plains as we go out of our February 17th when I'm recording this, and then eventually make it all the way to the east coast by the time we get into the early part of our Thursday, February 20th. It will bring with it some snow that could even be moderate to heavy at times in a swath anywhere from Nebraska and Kansas through parts of Missouri, and then all the way over to Virginia, Delaware, and New Jersey. We're going to be watching a little bit of ice as well as some southern end rain and storms out of this system, all of which I'll pinpoint in more detail in just a moment. First, though, I wanted to continue this overview by giving you a little bit of a closer look at the specific snow zones for light to moderate to heavy snow expected as we go through the next, especially 48 to 72 hours. As you come out of Nebraska into Kansas, as well as parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, many parts of these states in the moderate snow band there, as indicated by that more moderate shade of blue. The deep blue there into some parts of southeast Kansas as well as southwest Missouri indicating heavier snow possible through Kentucky, Tennessee, and then on over there into the mid-Atlantic looking like moderate snow will continue with maybe even some heavy snow returning as we try to see low pressure closer to the coast there in a place like Virginia, North Carolina, and then maybe on up there towards Delaware depending on how the track continues to trend. With that overview for this storm now in mind, let's go ahead and jump into the future radar timing here that we have with some of the short range guidance in the NAM model, which indicates this winter storm already starting to get its act together as we go overnight tonight out of our Monday and into the early part of our Tuesday morning, where we could at least see some light snow as far to the east as some parts of Missouri and Illinois. That will be a trend for a little while as we go through the early part of the day Tuesday, but your main energy is going to be back to the west and forming here in southeastern Kansas for the time being as we go through 1, 2, 3 a.m. on Tuesday. That will include Dodge City and Wichita there in Kansas. Kansas possibly getting in on some of those heavier snowfall rates to start the day. As we get towards the middle of the morning time frame from 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 in the morning, as we get through that morning rush and that commute that we could have going on despite some of these winter conditions in some zones, if you do have to travel from eastern Kansas over to parts of Missouri to northern Oklahoma and central Oklahoma, beware that we're going to have snow through a lot of these zones. And then as you get down there towards Tulsa and Oklahoma City, it's either going to be moderate snow or a transition to more of that moderate sleet or freeze freezing rain. Those are those icy conditions that could cause even more slick spots on roadways. So if you do have to travel for any reason into our Tuesday morning, please take it slowly on those roadways. Give yourself extra time to get out the door as these conditions definitely look pretty dicey here through especially again Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri at least through the first part of the day. As we get deeper through the day, passing lunch and then going beyond 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll be watching some rain down through some parts of Texas, southern Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Meanwhile, it looks like we're going to continue to see our snow expand from Tulsa, Oklahoma, up to Wichita, Kansas, to Joplin, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, points in between, especially as you get in the triangle that forms between those cities that I just mentioned. That's where it looks like we're going to be looking at some of that heaviest snowfall and those bigger snowfall ratios that could lead to even closer to a foot of snow. I'll show those totals a little bit later on, but this could be some of that heavier snowfall we get out of this entire event happening in this general zone, and it will last through a lot of the day here. I don't want to leave out the fact, though, that all the way up to Kansas City, Jefferson City, over to St. Louis, Missouri, we'll get at least some chance of snow as we go through some part of the day on Tuesday, and then eventually we'll start to see some of this expanding east by the time we get towards 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the evening here. Looks like some of our ice will be shifting on over out of central Oklahoma and then down into central Arkansas where places like Little Rock and Pine Bluff could be dealing with freezing rain or sleet as early as sundown and thereafter into our Tuesday evening. Back over to Oklahoma City, we could see a brief transition to snow before the end of this event while we also start to see snow falling for the first time in some parts of western Kentucky as well as starting to pick up more in some parts of Illinois and Missouri as we get towards 7, 8 o'clock. As if that's not enough, we'll also have some level of a threat for flooding and severe storms that we'll have to at least monitor far southeast Texas into parts of Louisiana and eventually shifting east along the Gulf Coast into the overnight. There will be some heavier rain and storms down here that could cause at least moderate impacts. And as you get down there towards Houston over to New Orleans, especially along that I-10 corridor, that's where we could have even isolated tornadoes. Something we'll have to watch as this begins trekking east at a little bit of a faster clip into the overnight. Here we go, pushing ahead. 1, 2, 3 a.m. now. That's what we're looking at as we get into our Wednesday morning. Possibly transitioning briefly from ice over to snow in a place like Little Rock, Arkansas, although not too much accumulation is expected there or in a place like Memphis, Tennessee. 
Up here where we get this moderate snow, though, coming out of southeast Missouri and into a lot of Kentucky, Tennessee, southern Illinois, and Indiana. That's where we're going to have that best chance for at least a couple of inches of snow with many areas getting a little bit higher. Rain continues back down there towards the Gulf Coast while all of your snow will be pushing east as we get towards around the dawn hour here of our Wednesday morning. And this is where things then begin to get a little bit dicey. It certainly looks like we're going to see a good bit of rain pushing through southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, Georgia, and then down there to the Florida Panhandle around 5, 6, 7, 8 in the morning Wednesday. It looks like we'll be seeing a decent bit of snow pushing through parts of the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. There will even be a little bit of ice between the rain and the snow into some parts of northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and north Georgia likely as we get into the dawn time frame of Wednesday morning. I would certainly question some of the impacts, especially as we get from this point and then past the Appalachians into points eastward, though, as we're going to see some of this energy transferring over with low pressure that's going to be forming actually over closer to the coast by the time we get into later into the day Wednesday. Let me show you how this model pinpoints how that occurs. Notice some of your rainfall. We start to see more moisture forming closer to the Carolina coast. And then that sends kind of a new area of snow forming right over here into parts of central and eastern parts of Virginia into northern and northeastern parts of North Carolina, as well as with some significant ice in some of those zones as well, as early as around the midday into early afternoon part of our Wednesday. That leaves a little bit of a hole for some of those heavier snow accumulations back into points west, but eventually this NAM model even shows more snow expanding over more zones, as you can see here by the time we get towards 3, 4, 5 o'clock. So I think the forecast is going to be tricky, but one thing I can say for sure is that at least the northern part of North Carolina into southeast Virginia looks to see some snow picking up by the time we get to the end of our Wednesday. Some of this could continue into Thursday and shift a little bit further northeast of the mid-Atlantic shores, but that's a little bit more uncertain. With the timing of this system in mind, let's go ahead and look at the forecast snow totals here, starting in the highest confidence area in the central plains here with the National Digital Forecast Database through our Wednesday morning. As you come out of far eastern Wyoming, into far southwestern parts of South Dakota, and through a lot of western and southern parts of Nebraska, looking at an additional two to four inches of snow on top of what may already be on the ground in these zones, that will quickly transition to more like three, four, five inches of snow through some parts of northern and northwestern Kansas, over into central Missouri in the blues, also looking at about three, four, five inches of snow being the current forecast. But you quickly transition down here into the southeastern half of Kansas, the southern half of Missouri, and then the extreme northern parts of Oklahoma and northwestern Arkansas to this zone of purples and pinks. The current forecast there from Wichita over to Joplin, Missouri, surrounding zones. Upwards of 6 to 10 inches of snow, some spots closer to a foot with this event all said and done. It's going to be a sharp cutoff, though, as you go from around, say, 10 inches of snow in far northern Oklahoma down to Tulsa, where it could only be a few. Could it shift a little bit further south, though, and include Tulsa with that heavier snow? Certainly a possibility. And again, it's those little shifts that can really make or break totals in some places. And that's why you got to continue to watch the forecast and be prepared for the heaviest of what may be to come. Either way, the current forecast in Oklahoma City, though, only around an inch or two. Same goes over to Little Rock and Memphis as you're just on the southern side of that heavier swath in those zones. In terms of freezing rain over this region, I don't think many power outages are going to be as a result of this freezing rain, but especially here in the parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas where a glaze to maybe a tenth or two of an inch of ice is going to be possible. We definitely see some slick spots on roadways and particularly those bridges and overpasses out of Tuesday into early Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that. And of course, a deep freeze is coming after this and will allow for these slick spots to continue beyond this winter storm. The forecast does become a little bit more tricky, especially as you get past the Appalachians and closer to the Atlantic coast with this event. But let's go ahead and look at these forecast totals for now with the National Digital Forecast Database for the eastern half of this system. You can see as you come through about the southern fourth of Illinois, the southern 15 or 20 percent of Indiana looking at at least a couple of inches of snow being possible. Closer to six inches as you go get out of there and into a lot of Kentucky and far northern Tennessee where many spots are going to get at least three inches of snow and then again through that more moderate band wherever it sets up I think we could definitely be looking at more like five or six inches. Nashville, Tennessee you could be around a couple of inches of snow if the forecast holds. Down here as you come out of Tennessee into northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, north Georgia, and the western Carolinas this looks like that zone where we're going to lose a little little bit of moisture and then your moisture is going to pick back up as you get closer to the east coast so only adjusting to a couple of inches currently in the forecast in these zones even the western north carolina mountains and then you see the snow pick back up out of west virginia and then virginia far northeastern north carolina and right around that virginia north carolina border closer to the atlantic coast that could be where we get back out of the three to six inches of snow and then to around six to ten if this forecast holds 
maybe even closer to three to six as far to the north as southern New Jersey. We might also see a little bit of snow on up here into southern New England eventually, but it's not going to add up to much if the current forecast continues to hold. And that's why I've been saying that all the hype about, you know, an eastern coast snowstorm has not necessarily been worthy. The only ice expected on the eastern part of the storm is going to be in North and South Carolina, so here's a look at that. It looks like for now, the National Digital Forecast Database calling for about the northeastern part of South Carolina, including possibly closer to the coast in Conway, Myrtle Beach, and then on up here towards the eastern third, at least, of North Carolina, looking at the possibility for some more significant ice, especially there into eastern North Carolina, where we could get up to a quarter of an inch of ice. That could be enough to even cause some isolated power outages, so be on the lookout for that, and that could cause impacts as we go out of Wednesday as well as into Thursday. Thursday morning. That's the extent of what I have to say about that winter storm for now. Now I want to go ahead and give you a look with the latest information on some of these cold temperatures we're expected to see with the National Digital Forecast Database, specifically high temperatures as we get through the next several days. I talked about lows just in my last video. I'll link that down in the description if you want to look at that through at least Wednesday morning. But let's talk about these highs as we get all the way to the end of the week, as well as with a transition I'm expecting by the time we get into the weekend. Look at these numbers. Tuesday, February 18, 2025, negatives and single digits as we see cold air moving in behind that winter storm all the way on up here over the north central parts of the U.S. and down into the central plains where even Kansas and Missouri struggling to get above one, two, three, four, five, six. Kindergarten counting numbers being your high temperatures down here in the parts of Kansas and over into Missouri into our Tuesday afternoon. And it's going to be in the teens and 20s all the way on over to the northeast U.S. during that same time warmer down there towards the Gulf Coast, but it's going to cool down there even eventually. Let's jump out of Tuesday into Wednesday. You can already see that cool down beginning with 40s now trying to get on the door there of Houston through central Louisiana, central Mississippi, central parts of Alabama, central Georgia. Of course, north from there into the northern parts of those states, we could even see a little bit of winter weather. And then of course, we're into the 20s and 30s into the zone where we're going to have that heavier or at least more moderate snow possible through the day on Wednesday. Back to the west, though, is where all these circles are indicating record cold highs expanding down as far south as northern Texas, where it's going to struggle to crack freezing in Dallas for a high on to our Wednesday, and even all the way back on up there towards parts of South Dakota, negative one, negative two for a high temperature, even colder in the mornings. This is dangerous cold. Where again, I can't stress enough, you want to be protecting people, pipes, and pets. Into our Thursday afternoon, some of the record-breaking cold is going to be a little bit further east, where you can see more towards the Mississippi River, a lot more teens and 20s, all the way down to central Mississippi and north-central parts of Alabama. It's going to be that cold as this Arctic blast expands east into our Thursday. This is still bone-chilling cold, though, with single digits and teens up here towards the Dakotas and Minnesota, teens and 20s into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, as well as the interior northeast for our Thursday afternoon. We start to see a shift, though, and I'm going to show that to you. Friday, we start to warm back up a little bit more. By Saturday, look at what happens by Sunday. Now you start to see more 40s, 50s, and 60s coming in from the south and west. And we've even got temperatures above freezing in some parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes by Sunday. So we will see a recovery into the weekend. And this is all I wanted to really talk about for the longer range pattern. I don't think it looks too active for most zones, but we could at least have a weaker winter storm or two as early as the upcoming weekend. I'll cover that more in a future video. I just did want to stress the fact that we are going to warm up. There is some relief eventually on the way by the time we get to the weekend. That being said, that's all I have to say in this update video. I might have a live stream or another video about this winter storm as we go out of tonight or into our Tuesday. Make sure to subscribe to other ways so you catch video updates from me in the future. I'll see you right here next time at One Nation Weather. One Nation Weather. By the way, while I use many of the models in my videos, they are from Weatherbelt. The logo is sometimes in the bottom left side of my screen. Now it's up here big on the top. I just wanted to say you can always check out their free trial link. It is always down in the description of my videos. One Nation Web.